And good afternoon. Welcome to today. The race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stan Salter along with Tim Tullock on a beautiful Sunday afternoon here at Pimlico, home of the Preakness. The carryover in the Rainbow Pick 6, that continues to build. We'll get to all that. That's going to start. Well, there it is. Let's, let's show you the big number right there, right off the mark there, Tim. That's a big number, over a, over a quarter of a million, $251,028. Pick 6 today starts in race 3. Yeah, that's important to note. Pick 6 does start in race 3 today. And, uh, yeah, just it's going to get well played today. It's going to be a big day. As summer got here. Yeah. Last night sometime, yeah. man. Summer is definitely here today. A little toasty here in Maryland, but that's what we expect in the old line state. Got the old Preakness polo, Preakness vest combination on for, for a little good luck today in the pick six. So the continue, uh, carryover in the pick six, that continued to grow as a result of yesterday. Yesterday had multiple winning tickets in the pick six. It still paid uh, a little over 3800 for six out of six, so that was a nice payout. The late pick five, that paid well. That paid over 4000 You had Ty Bar, a long shot winner in race five to kick off the late pick five. That was a nice ride. Weston Hamilton for Graham Motion. Michael Merriman had a long shot winner with Dancing with Painter. Aconetta wins the feature. Nice ride there, Rosario Montanez. So uh, some great racing yesterday. Yeah, and we opened up the day with a big winner in the first, Belmonte for Marco Salazar and Antonio Lopez, $39.40. Yep. So there was a little bit for everybody yesterday, and I expect the same today. All right, well, let's, uh, we showed you the pick six carryover. Let's give you a reminder about tomorrow, special holiday reminder. We're going to have live racing tomorrow, Memorial Day here at Pimlico. It's always a big crowd, Memorial Day at Pimlico. It's closing day of the Preakness meet. It's going to be a mandatory payout in that rainbow pick six. If nobody hits it today uh, or if there's multiple winning tickets today, nobody hits the jackpot today, uh, that pick six will be well played tomorrow. It'll be a mandatory payout in the pick six tomorrow. That will, that will get up uh, upwards of uh, over a million dollars, I'd say. Sure, if it doesn't get hit, uh, hit today, tomorrow will be a big day for the pick six. But uh, look, if you take it down today, it's still going to reward you yep. well. Yep. All right, so let's show you a picture of both tracks. Like, uh, like we said, beautiful weather out here today. A little warm, but main track is fast. Turf is firm. Some good shots of the infield as they're uh, taking down the Preakness infield. In the in the 80s, sunny, no rain, fast and firm. First race post time is 110. Let's get right to it here. Race one will kick off the rolling super high five. We have a carryover in the super high five that starts in race one. It's a little over 2600 $2,672 for that super high five. That's a low 15% takeout, so keep your eye on that throughout the day. Also, race one kicks off the popular early pick five, which is a mandatory payout industry low 12% takeout. Tim, you have a ticket for today's early pick five. Let's check it out. Yeah, early pick five, uh, a $24, no, $48 uh, ticket, and I used two in the first race using the one gold Cadillac and uh, the seven Ra Ravenel. In the second race, I go three deep there using the one great French kiss for Mike Trombetta, the three River Sonata, and uh, the six True to Janine for Jamie Ness and uh, Javier Toledo. Third race, I used two there using the one uh, Determined Knit Mission and the four Shack for Love for Michael Trombetta. Fourth race, two deep in that race, also using the three Pr uh, Precious Peach and the seven, who will most likely be your short price favorite, Eye, of Ber B Eye on Berlin. But Precious Peach is sh shipping up from Florida, and I love those horses, so I'm going to give that one a little shot there. Fifth race, I spread a little bit going using the two, five, six, and nine, a wide open starter allowance, 25000 going a mile on the turf. $48 ticket. Good luck if you play along. All right, let's take a look here at race one. We're going a mile on the turf. Maiden claiming 40000 Philly Amares three and up. I go with the one gold Cadillac on top. We have a video spotlight to show you of this filly. Here's the race late April going long on the turf at Laurel at this level. Yeah, first time going long on the, on the turf and a good effort had led all the way and just is very very tenacious all the way down to the wire. Just gets beat uh, a neck at the end of it and still trying to come on late here. Love to see that, but just can't get back up. But she'll improve second time on the turf for Trombetta. Gets a great draw down on the inside. I expect uh, Victor Carrasco to be going right to the front with that great draw and trying to take them all the way on, on, on gold Cadillac for Mike Trombetta. All right, so we both have the one on top. She's by Seville. No surprise. She likes the turf. I used a seven in my exacta here. Ravenel for trainer. Now in 
the Tom Proctor barn. First start in the Tom Proctor barn. He gets uh, Georgie Vargas Jr. to ride his filly by Verrazano. And, well, the two of the two turf races, they've been uh, just okay. The turf sprint look, looks a little bit better than that, uh, the, than the turf route. But the, the turf route, well, I was on a yielding turf at the fairgrounds, so it gets a firm turf today. That could help the seven. I think that's going to be key because she didn't run that badly sprinting on the turf, on a firm turf course at the fairgrounds uh, last November. Comes in here for Tom Practor with a bunch of good works, including a nice work on uh, May 4th, three quarters of a mile, 113. So she's certainly going to be ready to pop off the bench going long. And she's picking up Georgie Vargas, and that never hurts. All right, so we, uh, we both like the four as well here, the four gold. Makes me smile for trainer John Pregman Jr. Osio Caramanos rides this mare. Now she's 0 for 32, a six-year-old maiden, but uh, she ran an R8 fourth last out up there, up there at uh, Belmont, going six furlongs, and she's run some some big races going long on the turf before. This will be her first start on the Pimlico turf, surprisingly It enough. will be. And Gold Makes Me Smile actually won a race in her career, and she got taken down. That was uh, two falls ago uh, at uh, Laurel Park. But, look, she's been hanging around this and trying to break this maiden for a long time. She's coming out of a very fast race uh, while sprinting up there at Belmont Park. Gets to go back long today. She'll be able to lay a little bit closer to the pace, and hopefully she can have enough finish uh, to get a part of it. And maybe she finds herself in the winner's circle, uh, but, she again, she's 0 for 32, and she's going to need her very, very best. Picks up Caramanos. Caramanos has ridden her a couple times before going long on the turf and with a decent result. So we'll see how it all goes for gold. It makes me smile. All right. I, I love Lemon Drop Kid as a racehorse and a sire. I didn't use this filly, though. You you did. Lemon Drop Dreamer, a first-time starter by Lemon Drop Kid for trainer Jonathan Maldonado. Yeah, out of a Ma Malibu Moon um, uh, mare. Now, that mare, Magical Dream, a really, really uh, well-bred mare. She didn't race, but she sold for $210,000 at the Keeneland uh, breeding stock sale. So you know the mayor's got some blood to her. Been working pretty well for Maldonado to go long first time um first time out uh, some good works a good gate work some solid five ace works including a nice work on may 4th a 101 and change so uh, you can't leave maldonado out he's having himself a decent year winning at 18 percent 33 percent here at this meet so i'll give lemon drop dreamer a shot here six to one on the line with toledo all right it's so a nice big field to kick off the rolling super high five in the early pick five there in race one, let's turn the page. Race two starts the early pick four. We're going six furlongs, claiming 16,000. Philly Mares three and up, never won two lifetime. We both end up on the six on top here. True to Janine for trainer Jamie Ness, the nine to five morning line favorite in here. Je Jevion Toledo will ride today. This Philly, a good second, last out at, 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 at a similar level uh, up there. Delaware had a big maiden score at Laurel last April. Forget, forget about the turf try in between, but her last two dirt tries have been very good, and she'll get a nice trip on the outside today with Toledo. And I can't tell you how many times we've seen this. They break their maiden, let's try the turf, let's try the turf. They run no good on the turf, and they end up back up in the same spot as they should be. She comes back into this favorable spot, broke her maiden for maiden 16. Good race for the 16 up at Delaware. Gets a nice outside draw for Jamie Ness and Toledo, and I expect her to be right there when they get to the wire. All right, so we both have six on top. The one Great French kiss for trainer Mike Trombetta. A big win two starts ago against Maiden 16,000. Was claimed that day. Stepped up to allowance company. That was a, a little too tough. That was on the turf. <laughs> and now we dropped it back down uh, to, to, to the 16,000 two life level. Caramano's back aboard. Uh, the, uh, you, uh, you like the one a little bit. I, I think the one should be right there. Yeah, I think so too. And we just talked about it. A nice maiden breaking score for 16,000 where she just absolutely galloped. Let's try the turf, try the turf. Oh, no good. Back at this level, she could be very, very tough. Back on the main track, back at a good level. Some good work since that last start for Mike uh, Trombetta and Caramanos returns aboard. A, French, right. a great French well, kiss. We, we've knocked a couple in here pretty good. Let's turn the page. Race three is the big pick six. It starts to 26. Rainbow pick six here in race three. Let's show you the number. Over a quarter of a million here in race three. $251,028 is the pick six carryover. 
both Tim and I have tickets. Everybody should take a shot here on the pick six. Tim, let's check out your ticket first, see how you played it. Yes, uh, what do I got? An $84, $86.40 ticket. I got three deep in the third using the one determined mission, the four shack for love. And I threw the five in there, uh, Boda che uh, che Cheetah for Jose Corrales. Not because this horse has got any kind of form, but his barn has been red hot, especially with Victor Rosales. They won a couple the other day. Fourth race, two deep using the three and the seven again. I on Berlin will be your short price favorite there. Fifth race, I go four deep just as I did on my early pick five using the two, five, six, and nine. Sixth race, three deep, one, G4, the five, Cresses and the six, Courageous Lynn, who is my top pick in there. Seventh race, I use three of them, the three, uh, Delta Outlaw, the eight, American Sailor, who again will be a short price flavor, and the nine, anytime, uh, any place. And the only reason I uh, went and uh, used a couple more there is uh, any American Sailor looks like she would win the race, has had trouble getting out of the gate occasionally, and you can't have that even in this race. And to finish it out, Three deep using, uh, two deep, excuse me, excuse me using the three uh, Pugalist and my top pick in there, the seven. She's right again. $86.40 on this big rainbow pick six. All right, there's Tim's ticket. Let's check out my ticket real quick. I'm going to go with a couple singles to kick off the pick six. Very affordable, $38. 40 cent play. I'm saving money for the big mandatory payout tomorrow. And uh, if no one takes the big I'm jackpot, hit it today. all right, we'll take it, <laughs> take it down today. Uh, but we're, I'm, I hope it goes to the, to, to tomorrow. We'll, we'll get about a million dollars in handling it to, uh, tomorrow. But I'm going to go with the Shack for Love, my single here in race three and race seven, race four. My best bet of the day is the seven eye on Berlin. I'll key on that mare. Then race uh, five. That's a nice uh, one mile. Turf uh, race start allowance company Philly and Marriage Three Life. I go five deep in there. The one, two, five, six, seven, nine. That race is wide open. Beaten nickel going two turns in race six. I go four deep there. Race seven's a nice starter allowance going five eights on the grass. That's the, the short price favorite you were talking about. The eight American sailors, four to five morning line in there. Gets a much better outside post uh, than, than his last couple starts. But the nine, anytime, any place, uh, maybe could pull off the upset. Then race eight. That's a nice starter allowance for Philly Mares. Long on the turf, I go four deep there. A couple prices, the two shift from Magician and the, the six fed up, fired up. A couple live uh, long shots maybe there in race eight. So $38 ticket. I need uh, two singles to come home for me to kick things off. Let's take a look at the third. Maiden claiming 16,000, Philly Mares three and up. Going six furlongs and Shack for Love, your eight to five morning line favored. I have this filly on top. Do you, do you have her on top as well? I have her a second. All right, well, let, let's start with the four Shack for Love. Let's show you her last race, May 3rd at Laurel Park in the mud. Here's the start. Yeah, the start. She gets up, just bumped around pretty good at the start. Doesn't get terribly off terribly, but does uh, get bumped around a little bit there. And then she uh, tries to make amends. Uh, turning for home, she gets on up there, puts herself in some kind of contention, uh, turning for home. And then she just gets a little late on the mud. She'll be getting back to a fast track today, which I think is going to help her a lot if we uh, – uh, we're going we're gonna to watch the whole race, uh, but we're supposed to go from top of stretch to wire. But no big shake. Uh, as you can see, she's uh, out there uh, about third right now, and she's going to make a little bit of a run uh, coming to the top of the stretch. And uh, she actually gets a, to the lead at the top of the stretch and then just flattens out, uh, uh, doesn't go all the way to wire, then just <laughs> and she just flattens out. Uh, uh, late in the stretch and gets beat three lengths while running second. So uh, here's her moment of, moment of truth, and then she just gets a little flat and gets beat by this horse coming on the outside to, to get it done. All right, all right. Uh, the, the horse coming up the inside, Millie Child, got, got the money there. But Shaq for Love, I thought, ran a big race. Foggy Dreams, who was third in that race, came back to win. So I, I go with the four on top. Alex Centron uh, aboard today for trainer Mike Trombetta. You go with the one on top here, determined mission uh, for trainer Dale Capuano. Yeah, got back at the level of uh, where she broke her maiden. <clears throat> uh, two start, actually she didn't break her maiden. This is a maiden. Uh, but back on a fast track going three quarters of a mile. Th uh, Dale Capuano is 30% with these maiden claiming star uh, horse uh, types. Nice work since her last race, May 16th, 5 eighths mile in 101 and change. And she's getting in very light, 113 pounds with Avery Wisman. And I think this is the first horse that uh, 
Avery's ridden for Dale. You win for Dale on a bug boy and you ride well, that could change your career. So yeah. this will be a very, very important mount for Avery Wisman, and uh, he might be get it done here, and I expect he will at a nice price. All right, I use her in the exact of the two queens or better. has been hanging around at this level for a while for trainer Tim Salzman. Uh, fourth last out gets Kevin Gomez uh, to, to ride today for the first time. She's 0 for 18. She likes yeah. to pick up checks, and, uh, well, she, she's 7 or 2. And I expect more of the same. You know, I look up and down her form, and unless she comes up with something a little bit uh, bigger, she just doesn't seem like she has a desire to get there first. Uh, so I use her on my ticket, but that's as far as I can go with her. And the six of uh, Venetian Drive for trainer Allison Delgado. Sheldon Russell rides this four-year-old filly by any given Saturday. The debut didn't go very well. It was maiden 40 uh, sprinting on the turf. Now a big drop to the maiden 16 today on the on the dirt, and uh, get, we get Sheldon Russell aboard. So the six ha has a license uh, to improve here. Uh, at this spot. Yeah, maybe. I mean, this one's cut out to be on the grass, didn't uh, perform very well on the grass. If it was sloppy and rainy any given Saturday out of a domestic dispute mare, I'd be all over this, but I think the uh, fast track is going to work against Venetian Drive. All right, let's uh, do you go with the Robert Gammer first time starter. Uh, Gammer bred, owns, and trains us. Uh, well, I know why you went with this Philly by Gato Pardo. You know something about that horse. You train that horse. He was a stakes winner. In fact, he, he, he was a sire of that horse that almost won yesterday. Yeah, just you, missed uni uni Unicoy. Unicoy almost just, won. Lost just the head, missed. Bob. Just missed. Look, the horse has been working okay for debut right here at Pimlico. A good work pattern. Hasn't missed very many works. Not working particularly fast, but you don't need to work particularly fast in a maiden 16. So uh, this one's reasonably entered. Is getting Felix Panero. We know he can win at a price anytime you want. And uh, so I threw Do I Ever first time starter having to be getting to be led right over from his barn right to the paddock right to the gate all right uh, in a good spot for his debut right here at Pimlico where he trains so uh, it's a maiden 16 it's a tricky spot here uh, the, the the favorites usually aren't too reliable at this level that said I go with one of the I go with the favorite on top Shaq for love but and I and I single I single on that field now she's by Shackleford Preakness winner Shackleford and looks like she's coming out of a strong race so see if I can get my single home here in the third Tim also likes the one determined well he, he goes with the one determined mission on top big carry over in that pick six it's over 251,000 so uh, they'll, they'll bet over 50,000 at least into it today so it'll be over 300,000 when it's all said and done sitting there for the jackpot we had a live single going into the last race yesterday the Ann Merriman horse looked like he was trying to run over top of horses in the stretch kept getting blocked yeah, it kept Ooh. getting blocked, and eventually, in the end, just flattened out a little bit. But I'll tell you what, he got someone's heart racing at about the three-eighths pole because I was like, okay, this is coming down. And did they had a little trouble, but in the end, just flattened out. But, uh, it, you know, it was exciting for somebody. Yep. All right, well, let's, uh, we'll see if we have some live singles today. Race four kicks off the late pick five. No carryover today. They took it down yesterday for a little over 4,000. Congratulations if you hit it. Jump back in today. As always, that industry low 12% takeout in both your pick fives here at Pimlico. Race four, a nice 12,500 starter allowance. Philly Mares three and up, five eights on the grass. My best bet of the day comes in race four. This, uh, this five year old mare, she'll get a nice trip coming from off the pace. The seven eye on Berlin, one coming off the layoff uh, two starts ago, May 9th uh, at this level, and then ran in the very one and had a trouble trip in the very one checked uh, checked at the half mile pole she was 13 to one in there she ran fourth only beaten uh, three and three quarters of a length ran a 75 buyer so she's run two big races as a five-year-old coming off the layoff angel cruz back aboard for rudy sanchez solomon he's rolling along this year having a nice meet here at pimlico just like he did at laurel uh, so we both have the seven eye on berlin on top yeah look she's a six-time winner going five eighths of a mile on the turf six for 14 a couple seconds she's in very very good form coming off that layoff since last november a big return when she won and that was a big race in the very one she had trouble she only gets beat three lengths for the whole thing she comes back in eight days i've seen rudy do this before on short rest and they've run uh pretty successfully he's 20 percent with his turf sprinters and as you mentioned he's simply having a great year and a good uh good meet here at at pimlico so this horse is going to be very uh this marriage is going to be very very tough uh, tough to beat. The only one they can probably get her beat is her. 
Uh, sometimes she uh, gets herself in a little bit of trouble. She's going to have to get away in between horses, but I think she'll be very, very tough under Angel Cruz. All right, we both like the three precocious peach for trainer Sarah Nagel. Jorge Riaz will ride this uh, filly by Dr. Peach, and she's pretty quick. She had a nice, she won two in a row, sprinting on the turf this past winter at Gulfstream during their championship meet. She got a 73 buyer with that win back in January. They needed some time off and probably uh, needed a race uh, a April 13th coming off the layoff. Had a had a troubled trip, carried uh, carried in at the start, was wide, uh, still ran okay. I think she runs better today, second off the layoff with Riaz aboard. I think so, and uh, Sarah Nagel, 18%, second off this type of layoff trouble in her last two starts, and as you mentioned, her last start coming off a little bit of a layoff, but they were smoking right along, 21-3, and 43-2. and two. I don't think you're going to see that on Pimlico's uh, course here today, so she's going to bounce out of there, I'm sure, try to get uh, right to the front. And Sarah Nagel, I don't know a whole lot about Sarah Nagel, but her numbers with limited amount of starters are very, very good. This type of layoff, 30, 60 days, 20%. Turf sprint. 45 percent she's almost batting 500 uh so she's uh clearly have got has got something going on precocious peach shipping up from Gulfstream park i love these Gulfstream park shippers i think they're always a tad better so i throw precocious peach in here and used her on my rainbow pick six all right and i used the four market money had a nice win rallying from off the pace last out i was against 16,000 three life got a 71 buyer with that win Going five and a half on the turf at Laurel. Now steps up to start allowance company today. So a much tougher race today, but she's going in the right direction. She has good momentum. She gets the bug boy Correa. Uh, the four market money, she, she could be a factor in the final stride. She certainly could. She ran that nice race at Laurel off a little bit of a layoff. Now she's second off a layoff, has that race underneath her, and you look down her form and you'll see some other races that could fit in here for market money and Mark Reed. And you, you have the five sweetly made in, I in the mix. I, I didn't use her, but she'll be a nice price. I, I do. She'll be a nice price, and she's got some positive races routing on the turf. You look at her form. She doesn't want to go a route of ground. Look at her last uh, two or three races sprinting on the main track they've been big races she likes the grass she's going to get her first opportunity to sprint on the grass we know she likes to sprint so i take a shot with sweetly made and jose garcia and jk sweezy all right so nice turf sprint there to kick off the late pick five which paid over four thousand yesterday let's get a quick commercial break well uh, the late pick four starts in race five a nice uh, turf route start allowance condition we'll check it out right after this Join us for Jim McKay, Maryland Million Day on Saturday, October 19th at Laurel Park. Come with friends and family to Maryland's Day at the Races, a celebration of Maryland's horses and lots of fun for all ages. Enjoy a full day of racing, including on-track entertainment between races. Don't miss the hat contest, three categories and wonderful prizes. It'll be fun for all at Laurel Park, Saturday, October 19th. For more information, visit MarylandMillion.com or LaurelPark.com. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at race five. Race five will kick off the late pick four. We're going a flat mile on the turf. 25,000 starter allowance. Philly Mares three and up. Never won three is the condition. My price play of the day in this race is seven. I'm listening. It's nine to two morning line for trainer Mary Appler. Daniel Centeno rides his five-year-old mare by Freud. Now that win two starts ago. That was a nice win down there at Gulfstream during the championship meet. That was 30,000 two life. Uh, swung four wide and, and got up late there. 73 buyer speed figure with that win. Then had a couple months off. Tried allowance company up there at Monmouth. Ran okay up there. Still ran a 68 buyer. Got beat three and a half. Gets a, a, an easier spot today. Finds a nice cozy starter allowance. Three life. Gets a, a great turf rider in Daniel Centeno. For Mary Epler, so I, I like the seven. I'm listening on top. Uh, yeah, look, she, she can run back to that last race. It'll be close. I'm not sure if it's going to be good enough, but she does have a couple uh, races that will be good enough here. A couple lines in her form uh, coming back uh, May, since May 4th. Uh, no works in between, but that's that's not a big deal. That's only been three weeks. But she went from uh, November to January without racing, and she was down in Florida, and then from January to March uh, without racing. So uh, I gave I'm listening a pass, but certainly capable 
capable. Mary Epler, 18%, second off this type of layoff. Uh, but I did give I'm listening a, a pass here. Just well, thought there were some better horses. We, we both like the five. You have Blue Atlas on top here, four-year-old daughter of English Channel, now in the Horatio to Paz Bar, and he gets Vargas to ride. Gets Vargas to ride, and the last one is the one's last race on the uh, turf course at Tampa Bay Downs was not a bad effort. Three starts ago at Gulfstream Park during the championship meet, got beat a length and a half and fired a 76 buyer speed figure. That one's going to be good enough. First time with uh, uh, to Paz, uh, 21%, 31 31 uh, 21% 30 to 60 days and he's 18% with his turf runners but you look up and down this one's form you'll see some good races that are good enough to win here today a nice work uh, at Saginaw Farm 101 flat on May 18th and as you mentioned gets a Georgie Vargas that's always a big plus all right so we both like uh, the five we both like the two as well Moon Chan had a nice win last out coming off what a four-month layoff for Bernie uh, excuse me, I think I swallowed a fly for Bernie Houghton. That was at Laurel, Starter Lounge, two life. Now a good spot today, Starter Lounge, three life. Forest Boys back aboard. Moon Chant might be going right to the front from the two old. Well, I think so. A good draw if you want to get to the front. And we know Forrest loves the rail, so she'll be stuck like glue on that inside fence. But a good return. I mean, that's a big return off that long of a layoff, going a mile and 16th. Uh, in front the whole way, just hung on, gets to turn back to a flat mile today. That's certainly not going to hurt uh, Moon Chance's cha uh, chances. And uh, I like her. I have her in my exact a force voice ride 7-2 to two on the line. All right, we both used the six burning question. Jane Sibeli, always dangerous on the turf. Now, this filly by Holy Roman Emperor, her last couple haven't, haven't been great. She went a mile on the turf at Gulfstream, two back. That was against second-level allowance company, tough race, and then another tough race sprinting on the turf last out. Gets an easier spot today. She's in for a tag. Uh, that, that, that might wake her up. Sibeli gets Caramanos to ride, so the six is live. Well, this will be the softest spot that Burning Questions ever run in for in for this $25,000 tag coming out of a sprint where they ran very, very fast. Jane Sibeli, 21% when she takes one from a sprint uh, to a route, shows three work sense uh, at uh, Palm Meadows on the turf and a couple on the main track at Monmouth Park. Picks up Horatio Caramanos. And as you mentioned, Sibeli's always tough uh, with these types. And I expect Burning Question to be right there this afternoon. All right. And uh, you have the nine, Firth. I used Firth on my pick six. Rosado rides for Lacey Gaudette. They take the blinkers off. She's 0 for 3 on the grass, but uh, she has run a couple decent efforts. She ran a, de a decent third a, a year ago at Laurel against Allowance Company. She ran a good third uh, on the turf. This race uh, going a mile here at Pimlico. She's coming off a of freshening, so I, I like your, I, I like the nine you have and, here. And working very, very well for a return. A nice five-eighths of a mile on May 15th. One to one flat, and as you mentioned, gets the blinkers off by midshipman out of a Tisnow mare. Uh, that's good enough for me on the grass and does show those nice uh, couple races on the turf going all around the ground last October over a yielding course at the Laurel Park. Only got beat three lengths and fired to 65. So I like Firth a little bit on, on the outside as shown speed uh, going uh, on the main track. May try to show a little speed here today. She did in her two turf races. So uh, going to have to contend with the speed to the inside Forest Boyce and Moon Chant, but a good break, and she can get over there and, and maybe be in a contending pos position early. I'm six deep in this race. How about the yeah. one sipping champagne, J.D. Acosta aboard for Jackie Savoy. This filly ran a decent third at this level. Last out, she stumbled at the start, when it was bumped late, and still a good third cut behind Moon Chant. So if you like Moon Chant, you have to like the one sipping champagne a little bit. Yeah, and the biggest thing, uh, problem with sipping champagne i went four deep in this race but i did leave sipping champagne off she's drawn the rail she hasn't gotten away well in her last three starts three consecutive starts you look at start earlier starts in her career doesn't get away well on those days so as she get, doesn't get away well today and she's got nine or eight horses to her outside she could find herself in a bad position early with a lot to make up so i mean i like her you could absolutely not gonna try to talk anyone off of her but i left her off of my uh, uh rainbow pick six all right so nice uh, turf round to kick off the late pick four let's uh, take a look at race six we're on the main track in race six we're going a mile in a 16th claiming 5,000 Philly mares three and up having won a race in six months never won four is the condition we're both on the six here courageous Lynn your seven to five morning line favorite for Bernie out might be a big day here 
for old Mr. Bernie out. And this uh, Philly by El Padrino, good second at this level. Last out coming off a, what, five, a, yeah. three, a three-month layoff. And uh, now now right back a, at the same level and uh, catches catches the right kind of group here to get the money. Certainly does catch the right uh, right type of group. A good race off that layoff. You would expect her to get a, uh, be a little late or maybe not quite get there. But she was closing a little bit on the winner uh, in that start. She was five lengths out of it at the top of the lane. I ended up only getting beat uh, three and a half. So you would expect Courageous Lynn to move forward off that race. She's already run uh, going a mile, gets to stretch out to a mile on the 16th where she's one for four uh, with a second. So uh, I expect her to, uh, to run well again today under Forest Boyce and uh, get to the winner's circle. This, this had to be a good hustle. This had to be like a good three, four o'clock in the afternoon hustle. Start looking at the Penn National charge and Boom, they come up with a favored winner, the hey, sixth the, courageous land. We they never give up. They right. never give up. No canceled no. cards in Maryland. No. They'll 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 get it, they'll wear you out and they'll get your entries and look, they probably put uh, put Bernie Houghton in a good spot. And we both like the one G four and the exacto Jorge Riaz aboard for Carlos Mencia. Good third. Two starts ago at this level. The starter lounge last out too tough. She was 27 to 1 in there. Uh, back to a better spot today for the 1G. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, look at that starter that she ran in last, uh, last time. Lonely Drifter would come out of that starter and win. Bring Me Answers came back and won the other day when he dropped back down uh, to this $5,000 level. And that's the key for G4. Just simply gets back to a level where he's competitive. That allowance, that starter allowance, uh, even though it was a nickel starter, those, those races are tough. He gets back right. where he belongs and is a, certainly a contender in today's sixth. All right, we both like the five as well. Cresses for Noah Averson. The barn had a big win the other day with a first-time starter, so they're they're feeling their mojo. They get Panero. He's having a big weekend, so, uh, yeah, the five's live here for, for the hot connection. I think so. First time on, at Pimlico in his last start, been running a, a, almost exclusively at Charlestown since last November. Not a bad effort. I mean, cl clearly, just give me a kiss uh, was a dominant winner one by 10 uh take that one out and then this one's right there for noah aberson and of course panero you've got to always watch panero because he's been killing us lately with some big price winners yep and then and, and he takes off the four let me slide by you you get the other bug boy avery wisman on the four for bobby Plummer. uh this horse uh it's been hanging around uh, at this level last few few starts uh, a good third two two races ago fourth i ran better actually last out a good fourth last out so she she could get up and get a piece of it certainly could be going in the right direction uh picks up avery Win uh, wisman who's been riding very well here actually he's winning 27 percent of his starts right here at pimlico if you look back on this one's form you'll find a couple uh decent route races one going a mile one going seven eighths of a mile against a little bit tougher that were good now that was a long time ago that goes back to over, over a year ago as a matter of fact thrown in a couple good races since moved forward in his last start maybe she can move forward again today going a mile and a 16th all right so we all we both like the same four horses there with the six courageous lynn on top let's take a look at race seven race seven kicks off the late daily double we're going five eighths on the turf twelve thousand five hundred starter lounge three and up we have a heavy Four to five favored in this race. The the eight American sailor for trainer Wayne Potts. Jebby on Toledo will ride. The, the last star that was last uh, weekend in the Jim McKay turf sprint had to break from the one hole, was bumped at the start, had to duel early, fast early fractions, and and got tired. That was uh that was only the second race uh, off a layoff. Uh, ran well down there at Houston this past January. A good second there with an 87 buyer, a big 92 buyer uh, last December at Tampa. So th this seven-year-old by City Zip, he's made a bunch of money, made over 200000 on the turf. He's ran a 99 buyer speed figure before on the turf. So he, he has the back numbers to, to, to handle this, this, this group, no doubt. Javion Toledo should get a nice trip if this horse can break well with some early speed. American Sailor should be there early and keep on going. 
going. It, well, it's hard to imagine that anyone could look uh, better in a race than I on Berlin did earlier for Rudy Sanchez Salomon. But uh, American Sailor is coming out of four consecutive stakes where she he didn't run badly at all, including his latest start uh, just last week on 17th of May right here at Pimlico, where he did get bumped around at the start a little bit and only got beat four lengths in the end and running a good number. His three previous starts were all good efforts. A seventh place finish, but still fired of 89 buyer speed figure in the KT Leatherberry back in April at Laurel and his other two starts at Tampa and Houston. Big efforts. Now, the biggest question is he can beat himself, and that's by not getting away. In three of his last five starts, he's had trouble at the break. A good break is going to be important. Does get the outside, so that's going to help if he doesn't get away the best. Uh, but I think American Sailor is the only one that can beat American Sailor if he doesn't get away well. All right, so we both have him on top. We both like the nine anytime, and he plays Fargus aboard for David Canizzo. This horse is pretty quick. He can he can go uh, he can battle a half in, in 44 and change, and he hasn't been worse than third in, in his last four starts he's won two of his last four so this guy he's he's no bum but he, he hasn't been going against stakes company like american sailor absolutely not and he's been in those starter allowance five thousand uh, optional ten thousand dollar races at the fairgrounds running good decent numbers by the numbers uh, he's very close he's very consistent he's been he's been in great form over his last uh, six races working well for his return up there to saratoga training track and he attracts uh, Georgie Vargas. Uh, he's going to have to come up with his very, very best. An American sailor is going to have to show up with less than his best. Maybe he can get it done. Uh, but he's in my exact. He's in your exact. Uh, certainly has a shot. All right. So the 8-9 exact are going to be tough there in race 7. Let's uh, turn the page. Plenty of time here for race 8. A nice finale to wrap up the day. Good luck if you're live and all your will pays here for race 8. We're going a mile and a 16th on the turf. 12,500 starter allowance for Philly Mayor's three and up. I go with the three pugilist on top. Let's start there. You you uh, use this filly in your exactus. She ran a big race last out. That was a uh, 16,000 free life company uh, coming off a, a, a couple month layoff in the barn of Brittany Russell. Now Sheldon Russell was aboard. I mean, this filly Gallup last out a big 78 buyer speed figure. I know big step up today, uh, but if she runs back to uh, her win last out, so that that was a nice number. Uh, this shit was a nice number. It was a big race, first time for uh, Brittany Russell, and you're absolutely right. I mean, this race is probably a little bit tougher than she faced in that uh, sixteen thousand dollar beaten race, and she was able to uh, dominate the race. And we know when you can dominate a race like that, you usually receive a big number. It's going to be a little tougher for her today, but she's got a nice inside draw for Sheldon Russell, who's very, very good with horses on the front. And I bet you he's going right to the front uh, in this heat uh, here and seeing if anyone else uh, can either want either wants to run with him or can catch him in the end uh, for a, a pugilist and uh, Brittany Russell and husband Sheldon Russell. But look, uh, this, she could be very, very tough in this spot in my exact that you have her on top. It could go either way. All right, the seven, she's right again. We both like. We have a video spotlight of this five-year-old mare. Here's the race late April down at Gulfstream going a mile on the turf. Yeah, coming off a little bit of a layoff going a mile on the turf, and she's she's making a run at him uh, in mid-stretch, and she ends up just flattening out a little bit, just can't can't get up, gets beat three-quarters of a length. Now, that was first off of a, a pretty substantial layoff, almost a three-month layoff. Now she comes in second off that layoff. Coming out of Gulfstream, she shipped pretty recently. She ran at Gulfstream on April 28th. She comes in here uh, May 26th, so uh, less than a month in between races. That was a lifetime best race that she ran off that layoff, and that was a starter uh, 25, starter 16, or optional claiming 25, which probably at Gulfstream Park, even in April, is a little bit tougher uh, than the beaten 16 that Pugilis is coming out of. So I'm going to give the she's right again for Sarah Nagel and Georgie Ruiz a shot here again, shipping from Gulfstream, these horses have run very, very well this spring at Maryland. So I'll take she's right again, three to one on the line. And we both uh, use the two Schiffer Magician. I use this mare on my exact. She's going to win one of these days, uh, well, just like she did last November. I'm not going to have her off my ticket when she wins. She'll, she'll get a nice, smart, ground-saving trip here with Forrest uh, breaking from the inside and see if she can just make a late run. Yeah, and I woke up in a in a sweat this morning thinking I would be alive to the last, and I didn't use Schiffer Magician 
on my ticket because she's going to get something she hasn't uh, had in her last start. She's going to get back to firm ground. She prefers firm ground. She's going to be second time going a route of ground uh, this year. I love what Lynn Ashby did with her. She lets her sprint in late April, comes back in uh, the first week of May, May 10th, hooks a yielding course. This filly doesn't really like a, a off a turf course, even though she shows a couple races where she's run well, but she gets back to firm today. I think that's what she wants. She should move forward in this race. And Lynn Ashby, you know, she's just sneaky good. She hits 24% with her turf horses and 21% with her route horses. Those are strong numbers. Sheffer Magician may get me in the uh, rainbow pick six. So if you've got room for another horse and you don't have Schiffer on it, I'd, I'd suggest putting her on it and don't follow my advice by not putting her on it. Uh, I like the two. I like the six as well. Daniel Centeno, I think you have to use Fed Up, Fired Up. You uh, you like the nine as well. Meow for Claudio Gonzalez. Uh, yeah, this horse has got, this filly's got mare, has got some good work, uh, good races on the turf last year. Now, she hasn't been on the turf since July of last year, but she fired some decent races with uh, decent numbers, low 70s, two races in a row out there at Penn National against pretty stout competition. A other than uh, last June at Penn National where she got the money and got uh, won by a neck, and then she went into a starter uh, uh, optional, two other than 25,000 out there, and she only gets beat uh, four lengths and runs a good, another good number. In fact, her lifetime best that day, 72. Now, she hasn't seen the turf but once since, and that was over a good course uh, last fall at Laurel Park. I think she's eligible to move forward off a little bit of a break where Claudia Gonzalez was very good and three good works since there. Uh, Carlos Carrasco gets the call, and Carlos and uh, Claudia, well, they win 32% of the time. All right, so a nice big turf route there in the finale. The feature, though, of the day is that big carryover in the 20-cent rainbow pick six. It's over 251,000. Don't sleep on it. Starts in race three today on the eight-race program. Both Tim and I have tickets for the pick six today. You can check them out and study them on the Pimlico.com website underneath the handicapping section. There's the number. Once again, 251,028 bucks. Pick six carryover. Starts in race three today. Good luck, Tim. Yeah, good luck. Nice carryover and super high five. Nice uh, eight-horse field to uh, kick it off. So very playable eight-horse field in the opener. That's eight, right? Or nine? It's eight. I'm all pick it's six. Eight. You, it's you, eight. It's eight. Good luck so, on that. I'm going. Yeah. I'm just. I'm only playing the pick six. Yeah, today. but if you hit that, you can invest a little bit more uh, in your pick six. Uh, all right. Well, good luck here. We're about uh, 20 minutes at uh, 28 minutes out for the first race. Good luck. 